In our last video we met Connor, a young boy who had just started working on the railway during the time of World War II. With this it also brought chaos and confusion to the railway and to the life of Connor. He had lost a friend, sadly, who had helped him out along the way of working. But he had also met a new friend, Penny, from the local pub, who they'd started seeing more of. He continued his work on the railway and worked his way through the ranks, and had recently been promoted to working in the railway offices. Connor was soon at work in the office and was enjoying it really well. He was punctual, hard working and very useful. He'd been working so hard that one weekend he thought he and Penny deserved a day out and that's just what they did. They went out for the day to the coast and had a lovely time and they returned home late that evening. But throughout that day a thought had been flown through Connor's mind and now that he was home and about to cross the bridge, it was troubling him even more and more. Halfway over, they stopped at the top, and he looked at Penny. He couldn't wait any longer. Penny, will you marry me? he said. Penny paused, then looked at Connor, and a beam grew across her face before he found him. Yes, yes I will, Connor. They both smiled happily at each other before hugging and sharing a passionate kiss. As time passed, the preparations and planning for the wedding continued as normal, and Connor's work in the yard also continued as normal. He had recently taken on a new role of showing important guests and visitors around, showing them the engine sheds, the office, and the trains as well. Whilst in the yard one day, Connor had a rather unusual guest with him. I say unusual, but it actually turned out to be a reverend who was in the yard doing research for a children's book about a train on a railway. Connor was intrigued by this and nevertheless showed him around the sheds and showed him to one of the trains that was there. A tank engine, no less. He looked at the reverend and the reverend looked at the train, smiling happily knowing that this would be the perfect train to use as the main character in his book. One day in the yard everything was going as normal as usual. They had another guest there though, but this one was on the tracks rather than on two legs. It was a saddle tank shunter that was in the sheds for repairs. It was old, rusty and worn out. It could barely move nor pull, and when it did, it spluttered out smoke, cinders and ashes everywhere. So much that it even caught a nearby coach on fire. The train disappeared into the distance and out of sight. Presently, Connor arrived into the yard. He pulled up and got out of his car, and then got surprised as he looked over and saw the flames taking hold of the carriage in the sheds. Flames started to build high and the smoke grew into a massive white cloud. He quickly took control and shouted to the nearby workers, Get some water on that quickly, he ordered before running back into the offices to call for the fire brigade. After dialing 999 and telling them the situation, Connor returned back to the sheds only to see the burning inferno of what was the coach. He saw the workers running back and forth, chucking buckets of water onto the flames, but it was no use. The flames were growing rapidly and quickly. But thankfully, in the distance, they could hear the bells and sirens of the approaching fire brigade. Connor and the other workers stepped back and watched as the fire appliances rushed into the yard. Within seconds, the firemen jumped down, grabbed the hoses, and soon quickly tended to the burning flames. It wasn't long before the flames were put out and all that was left was the odd bit of burning smoke. 
Presently, the railway controller arrived at the yard and saw the scene of destruction. He then looked over and saw Connor emerging from the smoking wreck of the carriage. He had been told about the situation and was praising Connor as a hero for his fast thinking in an emergency. Hip hip, hooray, 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 said the controller. All the other workers clapped and cheered for him, for his Connor was a hero. It was a crisp, cold December morning when the big day finally arrived for Connor and Penny. Each of them receiving a gift courtesy of the railway, a dress for Penny and the suit for Connor. And then later on, everyone started to arrive at the church, family, friends and other guests. They all piled into the church as the white wedding car pulled out front. Her father stepped out first, then helped Penny out. As they walked up towards the doors, a small snowflake fell on the ground, then another, and another, and soon it began to snow. Crisp white snow falling from the sky on a lovely wedding day. After the service, the newly married couple left the church. All around lay a perfect blanket of white snow. They headed back to the pub for the party and celebrate the new marriage. Then later on that evening, everyone went over to the nearby station where a special train had been laid on for Connor and Penny to take them to their honeymoon destination. After a fortnight abroad, the newly couple returned home. There was still a fair amount of snow, but it didn't stop them as Connor swooped Penny up in his arms and carried her over the threshold to celebrate the newly married life in their own home. Presently, Penny returned back to work at her father's pub, and meanwhile Connor went back to work in the offices. Little did he know that big news was on the way. It happened one day while she was out in the yard talking to some of the workers when the railway controller arrived. Gentlemen, I have just received some fantastic news. We are going to have a visit from Her Majesty the Queen, said the controller. That is fantastic news, said Connor. I can't wait, said a worker. When does she visit? said a worker. She arrives next week, so we don't have long to get the preparations in order, finished the controller. Later that evening, Connor rushed home to tell Penny the good news. She listened carefully and was pleased and excited herself, but she had some news to tell Connor too. But she didn't really get a chance to tell him, being as he was too excited. I guess she'll just have to wait for her turn. Later that weekend, everything was set up for the visit. Soon, the royal train arrived at the platform and everyone stood to attention. The railway controller was to greet the Queen first and then moving on to a ceremony. But just before Her Majesty was about to step out of the train, Penny rushed over to take Connor, pulling him aside to under the footprints to tell him some of the good news. It was just as the Queen and the railway controller were about to leave, they headed towards the footbridge, only to get stopped in their tracks as they heard a sudden cry out of, I'm going to be a dad! Connor then turned round and looked up, seeing the controller, and then looked at Her Majesty. Oh my dear boy, that is wonderful news. Congratulations to you and to your wife. Well done on this lovely occasion said the Queen, as the controller then led her away. With a new child on the way, Connor was doing extra hours at the office and yard. He often returned home tired and exhausted. 
similar to his car as well, which sputtered along each journey. I'm just about managing to make it to the destination. He returned home, and about to walk in, and was greeted by the door by Penny, who said, It's time. It's time for what? replied Connor. To be on the news. What do you think? I'm having me baby, you daft prat, she replied in a flurry. So with that, Connor snapped out of his daydream and helped Penny to the car. Although, that didn't help much. We were trying to start it, it spluttered and spluttered, and then fell silent. It was going nowhere, and neither were they. Connor then got a bright idea. Working so many hours at the office, he remembered the timetable very well. He rushed out the car and went over to the tracks, and waited, and waited. And soon enough, came along the train, Barnett's route past the hospital. He flagged it down and told them the situation. The fireman and driver agreed they would help them out. Connor and Penny clambered into the cab and soon set off. Soon they were racing along the tracks, passing through station and sheds, and then it wasn't long until the hospital came up into the distance and started to slow down. They were greeted by a waiting ambulance, nurse and doctor, who was glad to take them up towards the hospital. They thanked the driver and fireman, who wished them well, and then went up to the delivery room. Soon after came the screams of labour. It was agonising for Connor as he waited out outside, and then fell silence, but then soon broken by the wonderful cries of a baby. With the recent birth of Connor and Penny's son, he was still doing extra hours to pay for any extra bills that was needed. Once again, he often left tired and exhausted and very, very late. He was about to leave one evening and headed towards the car, tossing his coat, hat and case on the back seat, and then heard a bit of a commotion coming from the sheds. He walked over and listened. Silence fell, and then heard voices again. He crept up closer and peered in, only to get a bit of a surprise. There in front of him was a 14XX and a brake van. Both of them were old, rusted, and looked like they were ready for scrap. Suddenly the driver and fireman popped up and explained that they had indeed escaped from scrap. They were looking for a place to hide. Connor thought for a moment. He didn't know what to do. But he did agree to help them out and said he would speak to the foreman and railway controller. And so the next day, the foreman and railway controller came down to the yard to see the train. Connor explained the situation of how the driving fireman escaped with the train from scrap and needed help. The controller and foreman looked at each other, then Back to Connor. Well, Connor, you did a very good job telling us, and I'm glad to say we are going to help them out. We will not turn away a train in need. We will help him. Soon work began on the little train and brake van, having a full overhaul. The railway controller watched as the work continued, and it wasn't long before it was complete. Almost as good as new, if I do say so myself and was a fine asset to the team. With his son growing up, Connor decided it would be time to show him around the shed and yard. He watched him running around, excited, 
just like he was when he first went into the yard. It was wonderful. Soon the railway controller came. He had some news for them. After some long and hard thinking, I've come to a decision. Times are changing and so am I. I cannot change that. We are getting a class 33 for around the yard, said the controller. Is that good or bad news? said Connor's son. Oh, oh. I'll let you decide that. The other news is, I'm retiring. Well, that means, Connor, you will step up and be promoted to our new railway controller. Congratulations, you've earned it. Oh my, that's fantastic news. Thank you, sir. Oh, well, I am sorry to hear that you're retiring, <laughs> said Connor, with a big grin on his face. It wasn't long and Connor had taken over the new role as railway controller and with that he decides a new image was what he needed. A nice new waistcoat, suit and a bowler hat. He looked just the part to be railway controller. And it wasn't much long until the new diesel had arrived A class 33. Connor and his son looked it over in amazement. It was a wonderful piece of modern machinery. <laughs> Whilst looking over the diesel, his son looked up to Connor and said, Dad, why are diesels revolutionary? I heard one of the other workers saying it. Oh boy, said Connor. But not all was revolutionary in the yard, as Connor soon found out. With the increasing number of diesels, some of the workers around the yard were not pleased at all. Con arrived at the yard one day to find all the workers had gone on strike. They did not want to work alongside diesels. Look, Gunner, we will not work with diesels. We grew up and lived with steam. End of, said a worker. Here, here, it's our way of life, said another worker. And it's my life too. But this is as well. We all have to live with it. And besides... If we cannot have passengers and goods travelling by rail, then they will just go by road instead, and I'm sure no one wants that, said Connor, gesturing to the nearby rail bus and lorries in the yard. With that said, the workers all fell silent, realising the sheer truth, and then looked at each other. Eh, when can we start back then, Connor? said a worker from the crowd. Immediately, he replied, and with that, the workers soon got back to work. All seemed to be back to normal after Connor's little issue in the yard, but it was good to see the trains running on time and the steam and diesels working together. Oh, so he thought anyway. Connor came out of his office at the station and stood proudly, looking around and watching everyone going about their daily business. He then checked his watch and saw the time, and then heard the PA system announce that the next train arriving at Platform 3 will be the 12.47 to London. He watched as it poured into the platform, passengers getting on and off, luggage being loaded and unloaded, and then came the time for it to depart. The guard whistled blue, and the train started off, but then stopped all of a sudden. The driver jumped down from his cab and looked all over the train and soon found the fault. Yes, just as I thought. The pistons have jammed. This train is going nowhere, I'm afraid, sir. Kind of sighed in disbelief and then turned round to see all the passengers running towards him, crowding around him. I want my money back, shouted one of the passengers. This is a terrible railway, added another. Get another engine at once, finished a third. With all the voices talking at once, Connor grabbed a whistle and blew long and loud, <whistles> until silence fell over the station. Can explain the situation and would arrange for a new train to take over and continue for the last leg of the journey back to London. 
The passengers all boarded back into the coaches as the new train coupled up. He blew the whistle and watched as the train left the platform and headed down the line. Later on that day, after the failing incident with the merchant class on the express, Connor checked upon the station. He came out of his office and saw a group of young train spotters. He rode back to his own days, standing on that very same platform, watching the trains coming and going and collecting the numbers. He then decided he'd do something nice for them all and put on a special event. That weekend, a railway steam gala was the perfect idea, with a range of trains and vehicles from all the ages. It was a great success and everyone enjoyed it. Connor was very proud of himself, as was Penny and his son. They all stood there and watched everyone as they enjoyed themselves. It was a fantastic day. But then Penny leaned over and whispered into Connor's ear then paused in shock before shouting out, I'm going to be a dad again! Everyone in the yard clapped and cheered. The trains blew their whistles and honked the horns as a well done to Connor. And that is the life of a railway controller.